I'm really happy to be here. Um, this is, uh, it's, I love this part of the country. I, I'm actually a Michigan kid, but I'm, I'm living in New York right now. Um, but I got a chance to present this, uh, Mohammed Jafari, who actually uh, wrote the paper and submitted it. We sent him off to Qatar, so he had me fill in. So, but I was pretty happy. I jumped at the opportunity. So thanks for having me. Um, hopefully you'll find this interesting. So quick overview of uh, the presentation. I'm just gonna kind of blow through the acknowledgement, a little background on the project, kind of talk about the inspection that we did. And then importantly, and I think what's maybe interesting about this is the approach that we've taken um, post inspection uh, with the Connecticut DOT to come up with some scenarios that we're gonna be looking at during construction. So here's Mohammed. I said, Mohammed, send me a picture of you in Qatar so I can show everyone. And so there's Mohammed. And other people that were actively involved were, uh, you can see listed there. But there's Mohammed. He's, he's, uh, he wishes he could have been here too. All right, so how many people here know where Connecticut is? <laughs> All right. <laughs> I was thinking that maybe I should get like a bigger map showing here's Connecticut. It's a tiny state out there. And our project's kind of located in that red dot there. Uh, um, the, the tunnel, it's, an, it's a rock tunnel. Um, it was built in uh, 49. Um, it, it, I've got some, some pretty cool pictures showing uh, during the construction of it. Um, drilled blast tunnel. It's, it, it's not in great shape. There hasn't been a lot of work done on it over the years. Um, it's on a, a section of road called the Wilbercross Parkway, which is heavily traveled between um, New York and Boston. And interestingly, um, or maybe not, but to me it's interesting. Um, when I worked at the DOT, they had uh, this, the map file room where they kept all the maps and files and stuff, and they had the old linens where they, they did the original inspection, or the, the construction drawings of them, and they're really interesting. They're on vellums, I don't know, like, you guys, anyone remember what a vellum looks like, you know? So, um, and uh, they were done, they were, the design was kind of done in the 30s, part of like a, the work program. So they were, they were just beautiful. Uh, you look at them and like the north arrows on the, the plans probably took a, a week to do. But, you know, we're not, we're not there anymore, but uh, it's been around. Unfortunately, this, this uh, tunnel has been around for a while and it is kind of crumbling a little bit. So here's the pictures you can see here, pretty cool pictures. The DOT has some of these. We got some of these off online too. That, the middle one there is actually, I actually took a picture of that with my cell phone. I was over at the DOT like a week ago or two, and uh, I was, they had this big collage of all these old pictures, and I'm like, oh my God, there's the tunnel. And so I took that, that kind of funny, but pretty neat, pretty neat pictures of that, of the tunnel. And you can see um, on, on the far right there, you know, some of the, the drilling and blasting that they did. And it was interesting when we were looking at this project, and there's always a, uh, you know, people, rumors and stuff. That at one point, that I had heard, even actually when I was at the department, that that they actually that they actually didn't tunnel; that it was open cut, and it, but it really is a tunnel. But on either either end of it, um, where they have the rock soil interface, they you know they had to do cut and cover in there. But it is it was uh, drill and blasted. So this is kind of <clears throat> uh, a little bit interesting. That the red circle around it, you can't really make out the vent shaft. The vent shaft comes up through the top there. It's a ridge, <clears throat> it's called West Rock Ridge. Um, that's a park that's sitting on top of it. Um, a lot of hiking paths up there. Uh, and to the, the bottom left, you can see the portals there. And it, it, it does have some historic um, implications on it that we will have to address later on. <clears throat> Look at that. So here's the picture of the, going through the tunnel we did this with a drone. No, I'm not kidding. No, we didn't. <laughs> this is just a uh, GoPro footage going through. You can see it's not a real long tunnel. It's about 1,200 feet long. You may notice how narrow it is in there, and that's one of the, the difficulties that we had going through it. The, the each, uh, it's only like 28 feet wide. It's very narrow going through that. This is a, it's a limited uh, highway, so no trucks are allowed in, only passenger vehicles on it. So it, it, but it's still, even with that, it's pretty tight, and it came into to play when we, when, uh, when we shut it down uh, to do the inspection, it, we had to shut down the whole, the whole barrel. We weren't able to really get trucks through or cars through at one point, and, and it had a pretty significant impact uh, on traffic, which came into play when the, the people started calling the governor when we were out there, so you don't want that. So this is the basic typical section of how it was constructed. 
ribbon post uh, that had a pretty decent drainage system in, put in it for the time. Um, it it um, subsequently failed, but uh, in there, it's, uh, they, it's a good design. It's actually holding, uh, holding up pretty well. Really, the degradation that we're seeing is just a liner falling apart. So here again, I just wanted to point out the, narrow, the narrowness of this thing, and it, it will come into play when, when we look, talk about some of the rehabilitation thing. It's very, very narrow, and it really limits our ability to do much in there once we start looking at the rehabilitation on it. Here's a drain system I was talking about. So it has, it's got some catch basins in the road, and they had a pretty good system behind, uh, behind the, the walls and, and over the top of it, and I've actually seen some pictures of, in the cut and cover, how they covered it. But, uh, through some repairs that they did over the years, they ended up grouting behind there and basically uh, made the existing drainage system um, not working. It didn't function. And it's caused uh, what we see as a lot of the problems. And when we uh, did the inspection, we did, and I'll, you'll see it, we, did, we had GPR and ultrasonic in there to try to find where the, some of the water was sitting in there. On the portal walls, when we were out there inspecting it, there's a tremendous amount of, of water behind the portal walls, and in fact, there's like an artesian effect where water was squirting out of the portal walls. So it's, uh, it's a, the water is a pretty big issue um, with this tunnel. Okay, so here's the portal walls again. Um, another big problem we have is the vent shaft, um, and you probably can't see it super well. So the the far left picture, that's the original construction drawings of it. Um, the middle picture is where it's at today, and the right picture uh, is it was when we did the inspection of it. You can see it looks pretty good from here, but um, the, if you can see the middle picture there, it looks really rusted, and it's actually not functioning anymore. It hasn't been functioning for a long time. The location of it is very difficult, too. It's located right in the middle of the tunnel in between both of the barrels, so ex, ex, uh, getting access to it is very, very difficult. They actually, and interestingly, is they, there was a homeless person living in there for a while. I'm not really sure how he got in and out of there, but they've since barricaded it so that no one can get in their access. And it's a big problem in terms of maintenance for the DOT right now. Uh, in the winter, uh, there's a lot of water and rain that comes down there and causes a pretty severe icing situation on it. So traffic control, I talked about it a little bit. Um, you can see the picture on the left. The traffic all backed up there. This is a, it's a really heavily used road. And when, when we shut it down to do the inspection, we had to do nighttime inspection. Um, when, we did, when we did it, the, the traffic literally backed up for, for miles and miles. And we, um, we did a, a, a simulation uh, of that, which I'll get into a little bit. We did a visit model of it as a part of what we were doing. These are some of the, the manuals that we used during the time. The, the, the original inspection was done in 2008, and these are the manuals that we used guiding us through the, the process. At the time, uh, Connecticut DOT, they, uh, they didn't have the expertise to, to uh, do the tunnel inspection, so that's why they brought in. And since then, they've, they've been kind of picking it up a little bit. I don't know if they've gone to Doug's training or not. They may have gone up there. So is this what we did? So as I mentioned before that we did two types of investigation on it. Um, the ground penetrating radar, we, we had did nighttime work, shut down a barrel, went in there, and we ran the GPR down uh, specific um, geometry down there. We had went out there, did a survey, and, and laid the baseline out so we could keep track of anything. And then we did the, uh, the sonic and ultrasonic thing also to kind of pick up some of the water, the problems that we had in there. Um, we also, of course, were out there with a hammer beating on it. We looked at the drainage, which we knew was a problem. The mechanical system, which is not working right now, and the electrical system, the lighting on it still works amazingly, but um, it's, most of it's in pretty bad shape. And this is uh, some of the results that we got from, from the investigation out there. This is, um, you really can't pretty see it, but it was, we were able to pick up areas where the, where the concrete was bad and also some of the areas where water was, was uh, behind the walls out there. And here's the, the ultrasonic part of it. And when we overlaid the two of them, um, it really gave us some, some pretty good results on there. And here's a couple of pictures. It's always good to have some pictures on here, the people doing the inspection work. We, we thought it was pretty cool at the time. We were pretty excited about it. And Mohammed is in here. You can see this is another action shot of Mohammed. In the lower left there, that's him standing in there. That's him. 
I'm going to give him credit for that. <laughs> he would have told you, and I was, he actually <laughs> fell off of the lift at one point, but he was okay. He, he may not have mentioned that. No one mentioned it. Do you guys run into him? Don't tell him I brought that up, all right? <laughs> it's just between us. Okay, so we did our inspection. We overall, uh, tunnel condition overall is poor, not surprising. It's been around for almost 70 years. The vent shaft, the, the concrete of it actually was in pretty good shape. Um, so in fair condition, but the, the, the components of all the fans and vents and stuff are, are they've been out of commission for decades. And the portal, portal walls, although there's a lot of uh, hydrostatic force behind them, they're, they're in pretty fair shape. So these are all the issues. Um, and some of the big issues here, you can see there's obviously a boatload of issues for an older tunnel on there, but really the, some of the critical things are uh, the, the condition of the concrete uh, and the, the freezing with all the water, we're getting big icicles that are forming in the winter and then falling on cars. And, well, actually not hitting cars, but the, it causes the DOT to go in on a pretty regular basis during the winter to knock the icicles down so that no one gets skewered or anything like that. So that's kind of it. So, so then we started looking into design, what we're gonna do. Obviously, the drivers behind it were the, were the, was the aging infrastructure. Um, as I said, uh, maintaining the traffic was paramount. And then we also looked at design life and we started looking at, at possible solutions to, uh, to fix the tunnel. And so this is what I was talking about, the tunnel. So we, there's about uh, 71,000 cars a day that use this road. Um, the, uh, when, as I said, when we were out there um, doing the maintenance protection during, uh, traffic, during the inspection, it backed up severely. Um, we modeled it, the DOT wanted us to model what it would be like to shut down a barrel to do, do a rehabilitation, to, to, to like a full shutdown. What are you gonna do? We're gonna shut it down, we're gonna run everything through the two barrels. And it modeled about, that it would back up just about to the New York State line, which is about 50 miles, and, which obviously is not acceptable. Um, and so, that really started driving what we're going to be able to do in terms of our rehabilitation on the project and kind of like make maybe makes this presentation a little interesting maybe i don't know maybe not so we looked at a number of options um one through five we actually had this big like matrix of stuff that we looked at uh, we first started out just looking at, at rehabilitation on it and that was kind of our first goal we're like look at we're going to be able to do rehabilitation with it but we started running into issues with the useful life of it and the narrowness of the tunnel really kind of stopped um, what we were doing because we are end up having to build a, like a wall inside of the, the, the liner and it narrowed the, the road down even more so that was kind of not looking great. Um, and, and that kind of jumped us into looking at, at option one that maybe we put a new barrel in and then we looked at number two which was like putting two new barrels in and then an existing, uh, larging existing, existing tunnel and doing a, a partial closer closure, um, which is option five. And so what that is, it's a technique that they use in Europe where they, uh, mostly like on rail tunnels, where they, they shield the, they put a shield around the tunnel and they let the vehicles go through that shielded part and then do the construction kind of on the outside of it. So we were gonna be like one of the first ones in the country to do that. This is, whenever we're the first of anything, we're like, we don't want to do it. We don't want to be the ones that are like creating it. Oh, it worked in Germany on a railroad bridge, you know. Try to tell that to your boss, you know, so, all right. But anyway, it was, uh, it was one of the options. So this is like a pretty cool little rendering of what they would look like with the new two-lane tunnel on there. Um, and this is kind of what, this is what Mohammed came up with in terms of dimensions. We still aren't, aren't sure about the, um, you know, the need for ventilation on it. It's a pretty short tunnel. I think NFPA 502 will drive that if we need to do it, but then we'll be shifting over probably to jet fans on there instead of the, the vent shaft in the middle. But pretty, pretty standard. This is what the alignment would look like out there, just kind of going to the south of the existing tunnel. And then we looked at enlarging, enlarging the existing barrel, so there's really not much of a difference in the picture. But basically making it um, large enough where we'd be able to put three lanes of traffic in it, and then we'd be able to shift traffic around that way. So we'd be able to maintain traffic um, just through that process. We'd be able to maintain two lanes in each, in each direction, which we're shooting for. And this is kind of how we are proposing to do it, where we'd be shoring up 
the the uh, portal wall and then and then uh, excavating behind that and then shifting traffic over. And so this is just another one showing that the stage of the construction we, where we're putting in the waterproofing and, and the re, stage four is when you've got all lanes. So we, we were gonna make it wide enough so that the, re, the rehabilitated tunnel would be able to put all the traffic in there and then just do a complete uh, shutdown of the other tunnel. And then this is stage five. That, that uh, option would require just a little crossover for traffic. And then option four, the complete shutdown. And so this one, where the, the, the size of the tunnel would be, be the same, where, as I was saying before, just narrower on there. And this is basically the um, technique that, that we are gonna be using for the rehabilitation. You can see there that the, the adding the, the thick concrete uh, on the inside of that, and then putting in um, the uh, fan drains in there, we were gonna do that, but it, it ended up kind of narrowing it up too much for us to go through with that. And then partial shutdown rehabilitation, this is the, this is what I was talking about, the little thing, the, the thing that they did in Europe. It looks pretty elaborate to me. Um, it does, it only really gives you, it, we think it only would have given us one lane on there, but it, it, actually it's a pretty cost effective solution. I don't think that we're gonna go through with that option. So this is what we put together a group, uh, a bunch of uh, recommendations for the DOT. We looked at, this is where the matrix came in, we looked at cost, we looked at the, uh, how long it would take to construct it, because that was a big part. We, we evaluated delay time and the cost associated with that, the, the complexity of the construction, useful life, and then the overall functionality of it. And so we came up with this cool little table here with all the different options. So we went from options one, and then we started doing A, because we're adding options in, so we are trying to make it not confusing. But it was a lot, like I said, it's a pretty big matrix of things are coming with. And these are the ones that we finally uh, resulted in, in coming up with. We also used, um, we are trying to come up with a, a system for looking at the complexity of each of the options. And we developed this cost structure on that, and then we looked at how uh, difficult things would be in terms of like the engineering and and uh, the if you look at the delay time on the, on the far right hand part of that, and this was based on a federal highway uh, delay time, and we used our VISM modeling to figure out how much it would be, and uh, the overall cost of the delay of that one option was. And, I, and the number's odd to me. It's like, it says $800 million, which is like a lot of money, you know. I don't know, I don't know how the Federal Highway did their math on that, but that was like a big number. But we knew that, I think what that number kind of gave the DOT is more ammunition to say, yeah, we're not gonna do that, because they know they would have got calls all day and night on that. But it's, it was a hard number for me to kind of, to get my arms around, but that's what it came up with. And as I was talking about the, uh, the, the rating for the complexity of it and the, the duration, and, and this all kind of came into, into play. Useful life was a big issue with the rehabilitation. Um, we didn't think we'd get the 100 years that Condot was gonna, was gonna want on there with, without uh, really compromising the, the width of travel on there, so that was a big issue. And then the, the construction complexity, we did a one to 10 rating on that. And if you can see option five, you remember option five was the the shielded option what, that was only done in Europe, so that came up. We, we, we gave that a very high rating of that, although we think it could be done. We think that would be pretty complex and hard to, uh, to really undertake. So this is kind of where we're at right now. Um, we, uh, we're, we're the, the Connecticut DOT is kind of going into a NEPA process. They want to make sure that we follow, um, make sure that all the bugs and bunnies and stuff, you know, aren't torture during the process. Um, we're doing, we're gonna start doing some, some public outreach and then, and then once we get through all that, kind of jumping into the design of it. And so that's what I got. <laughs>